We're back for Black and Curious. I'm Kandrin. What up? It's Deja. And ooh, we talk pop <laughs> culture. We talk real life. We talk cross section between the two. And today we have sort of a heavy topic, but some things, you know, they got to go on the radar. Uh, obviously, I'm sure everybody knows now that there was a leaked Supreme Court opinion about Roe versus Wade and it being completely overturned um, as opposed to what most people thought that was going to happen, which was that the Supreme Court was basically going to continue to chip at it until it was no longer. Mm -hmm. So I think the case that started it was a six-week abortion ban, I want to say. I think it was six weeks in Mississippi. And so basically what everyone thought was going to happen was that they were going to say that a six week ban is fine. So that would make all the states rush to do six week bans. I don't think anyone thought, and they still might not, who knows after all of this backlash, but um, I don't think anyone thought that they were just going to be like, Roe is unconstitutional, Roe and Casey, no nonsense. They're all nonsense. Right. Um, Special F you to Clarence Thomas for coming out talking about uh, we can't be we can't be upset and throwing tantrums every time things don't go our way. Your wife was down to January 6th, sir, and, and orchestrated and organized it, sir. Well, um, you've been special silent F about you. a lot of shit. Special and F you. <laughs> special F you to Samuel Alito who wrote this god awful opinion. Um, but let's talk about the, the sidebar. Um, Clarence Thomas is probably likely the, the one who leaked that for the fact that he wants to take the heat off of him for his uh, affiliation being his wife to January 6th. But you, know, you ain't heard none of that from me. All of what I said is alleged. I don't know. They have. I don't. <laughs> but the, the people have been checking the footnotes. Apparently uh one of the footnotes referenced making sure there was a uh, enough of a supply because enough children are not going up for adoption anymore so that's why we need to overturn roe v wade and i'm just like that don't White sound children. right let's call that it does not thing. Sound right let's call a thing a thing i don't know that roe v wade was created with people of color in mind uh, but it, be, it benefited the people of color, the women of color uh, specifically, I would say. Yeah, um, I think that a lot of the... Oh, while we're there, hold on. Let me, before you get too deep into this, this is what special F you I have for Samuel Alito for bringing up previous cases like Plessy and cases about segregation and like, well, sometimes precedent needs to be up, uh, overturned. F you because that's you're wrong in this situation. Okay, now you can go. Sorry, I, um, I knew it was something. I had a special F you for him. <laughs> go ahead. The bottom line for me is that uh, I feel like this Roe v. Wade shit is primarily to stop the uh, execution. It's, this is the the uh, pro lifers. Okay, um, their terminology stop the. The execution of white babies, because those who predominantly use uh, Planned Parenthood, I think the number is 60% is white women. And a lot of times people don't realize that <laughs> a lot what of think about us. Also, it can be married women. Also, it can be yeah, some of the states that have abortion bans on the books um, that are waiting to go into place are, you know. There are no exceptions. Like not to save mom's life, not if baby is going to not have a good quality of life, not if um, rape, not if incest. So if your nasty uncle or in some cases, your daddy mm -hmm. was in there, you know, mm -hmm. those are situations where these women are forced to carry to term and mm -hmm. and people saying oh there are other options no the uh, there are two options once you're pregnant <laughs> either to be or not to be Hello? you know what i'm saying yes you have options after you deliver but if somebody is pregnant and does not want to be pregnant anymore th there are no options after that Hello, and then not only that, not to be. if you once you give birth to said child 
who's to say that those who do not have the means, those who are of LMI communities, have the ability to give that child up for adoption? Mm-hmm. Like, where would you have the resources if you don't even know that, that possibility exists? And let's be honest, there have been study upon study upon study to show the type of children who end up in these poor foster care situations that black children, especially darker skinned black children are the ones that get left in foster care, that get left in these poor situations. So it's like, there are children out there if y'all wanna adopt, y'all just don't wanna adopt certain types of kids. Let's keep it a stack. Like, Mm -hmm. come on, Mm -hmm. like, come on. Mm -hmm. Um, My- Also, I feel, and this is an aside, 100%. I will not be untrue to myself and and not say that like, I do feel a way when I see uh, black and brown children specifically being adopted by the latter, while I understand that every child needs a loving home. Um, And if no one else is taking said child of, from the the communities that this child represents, they should, they should go into a loving home. I appreciate that effort, but I still sometimes cringe. And I and I I don't know what that is about. Maybe that's something for me personally that I need to, you know, kind of dissect. Well, because you know that there's it's a tough life. It's yeah. a tough enough life when you when there are people. And oh, while I'm here, special F you to Amy Coney Barrett, who has <laughs> adopted some black kids and who don't need them. Um God, I didn't know that. Yeah, she adopted like two Haitian kids, I think. So that's why she's a staunch I just, I, adoption. It's for me, it's like the culture. It's a cultural thing. It's the, but it's like it, cause, because then it becomes like cultural appropriation because you're trying to understand how to care for these children that don't look like you. You know what? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's not funny, but it is. Remember the episode of Girlfriends with Lynn and her sister who turned out to like, was completely doing like full-on cultural appropriation and she was just like well she was trying to teach her black her biracial little sister about her own culture and she just turned out to be like this white lady with braids and saying the n-word and songs like ma'am what's her name um who said that she uh oh what is her name dolazal she was the first rachel we're not we don't have to do that at all thank you oh shit i'm like rachel girl like baby rachel we are all the way everywhere else from this conversation yeah. but whatever this is black and curious but i did want to say like uh demetria lucas who we cite here quite a bit because she yeah. just she just hits the nail on the head she talked a little bit about um just this is not a surprise we've had conversations about the manosphere and how they are talking poorly and talking down to women and it's like y'all just mad y'all can't control women anymore Mm -hmm. and 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 the women of said other people Mm -hmm. (laughs) like y'all got to stop voting in in the interest of just the skin tone and vote in the interest Mm -hmm. of your sex at this point because here the fuck we are yeah um and then my last thoughts as a attorney who took constitutional law Mm, um, two things first of all states rights ain't never been good for us Mm -mm. everything (laughs) okay we had to get segregation undone via the interstate commerce clause like people don't know that because it's not common knowledge but that's how they undid it it was like okay people are moving throughout this country state to state i'm simplifying obviously but we need a uniform set of laws and we can't be having you crossing over from one state to the next and there's segregation so like that's how that was the logic and you have a lot of the laws that we have carved out and back to my fu for samuel alito because he spelled out the cases A lot of the laws that we have gotten and a lot of the rights that we have gotten have been via the 14th Amendment. Mm. And that it's just, 
he basically was like basically all of these all of these um rulings are on the chopping block now because we can't just be carving out stuff that wasn't there it wasn't there and when I'm like that shit was written before black people or any anybody who wasn't you. white was cr- I'm uh, going there I'm going there person. next I'm going there next okay sorry but like everything has been carved out of the 14th amendment so if you're seeing abortion as a singular issue and roe v wade as a singular issue it's not it is not because states rights has never been good for black people and people of color um and the 14th amendment is where all of our rights live frankly or a lot of our rights rights live and as deja was alluding to and started to talk about F the Constitution, because all of this constitution ori- constitutional originalism, like, was go written- to hell. Like- the Constitution was written with rich white men in mind. And yes. every other right has had to have been an amendment. Yes. Or it has had to be carved out of an amendment. It is not lost on me that women having a right to decide what to do with their body had to be carved out of an amendment and it was not there it was it wasn't even there it wasn't even in the original text period it had to be amended and then carved out of a fucking amendment so like miss me with all of the constitutional originalism that's not oh it's not in the text no it's not in the text because women were not considered people of color were not considered, poor people were not considered, nobody was considered in the constitution except for white men and landowners. Les, like, period. Period, <laughs> like, that's thing. my period. So like, like, I, I don't wanna hear it. We are, clearly we are passionate and frustrated about this, but like, if all this shit starts going down, just just with the Roe v. Wade stuff alone, imagine the things that are gonna happen to like our, our our brothers and sisters and our friends of like non-binary community, like like in the gay community period. You know what I'm saying? Like period. I couldn't imagine being told that the rights that I was given in the last hell decade now all of a sudden are null and void. And if you do X, Y, and Z, you're going to jail. Like what's the fuck or, like, all the laws in Texas and Florida where they don't the dose don't say gay bans yeah. and how they're trying to like stop children from self-identifying as however they choose to like that's a part of childhood you grow up and you figure out what your identity is and just because you on the outside have no understanding or no regard for whatever said identity this this child has chosen that's not your right yeah if you think it's just about Roe v. Wade, just watch and just wait. Child, I, I have um, to down because I'm getting angry. The, like children, all the shit is wrong that's happening, period, right? But then the, the idea that you are going to subject these children to so much more fucking trauma, all because you feel uncomfortable with them identifying as non-binary or as fucking gay. Fuck you. And I'm not going to say the, the F you, the whatever. Fuck you. Yeah, I'm trying Sorry. to keep it cute, but like I've already dropped one, so it's fine. But it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's not. Angry. It's I, it's not the and and for all the people, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, voting matters, all of that stuff, because the Supreme Court was kind of the whole ball game. And if we don't mm-hmm. get a super majority in Congress, it's like unless people just decide they ain't going to and I think that's what's going to come next is like people are just going to be like no like I was listening to something like we're out here voting and and for those of us who do vote right we're out here voting for hopefully those of us who's like-minded are voting for the right things however but it almost seems like it doesn't matter because at the end of the day the lobbyists and all the corporations and the people who have the money the the one percenters are buying the laws that they want to be in place I agree with you, but at the same time, some of this is like, I'm sorry, we've gone very deep into we did. And government and all of that, but sorry, y'all. <laughs> um, some part of this is like the type of people we have in Congress and like we have these moderate Republicans that don't, we're po- moderate Democrats, fake Republicans that won't let things go through. It's like- True, but then you also have them old ass dinosaurs that have been there since the fucking- Oh, I agree with you. 
And there's no, there, to, to my knowledge, there's no precedence or like setup to get these people the hell out. Like why no, are you term limits? Here? I think everybody should be on term limits to include the Supreme Court. But um, yeah, I just think we need more progressive people. And we've talked about it here before. I feel like to a certain extent, Gen Z is just going to be like, no, we're just not doing that. We're not doing like, that. <laughs> and I was even listening to um, Rachel Maddow last week and they had on some different, you know, people in Michigan. Michigan is trying to do a law and it's like, well, if prosecutors won't prosecute it, then what are you going to do? So there are certain counties where they're like, we're not shutting anything down. We're just not going to prosecute it. Like, what are you talking about? Hello? We're not doing that. Like, listen, Gen Z, if y'all li- if y'all are following Black and Curious, we, listen, 100% behind you, do some shit. So, clearly, those are that's not just Gen Z. That's just, I feel like people are trying to figure out how to make it, how to do things on the margins. Um, and I respect that because it, it takes a whole entire community, if you will. It does. Um, so anyways, like I said, I'm so irritated with this whole decision. Um, I'm so irritated with those people. I am irritated with the whole entire Supreme Court right now. And yeah, again, if you think this is just about Roe, it's not. There's it's gonna be it's gonna be all kinds of stuff. Fetal personhood. That's what they're really after Mm -hmm. is fetal personhood. Like like that that the fetal the fetus actually has rights of a human being and that is ridiculous so yeah, the craziest thing that i've heard sorry to cut you off was the no, i don't know was, done. was but they were going back and forth as to why uh an ectopic pregnancy could be um have a have an abortion done right that's what and i'm saying like, like this is about control girl, what you talking about? Yeah, like it's, hello? Gonna, it's gonna kill you if it stays kill there. you and it and it because the child is not survivable outside of the womb. So what the fuck are we talking about? That is goddamn proven science. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like I said, I'm sure that the people who have opinions formed are, have already fully formed their opinions. Um, but yeah, I just, I hope you guys <laughs> take seriously what we're saying and Pay attention for the young people, pay attention for the yeah. all the people shit, but also for the young people, pay attention to what the fuck is happening because this, the stuff that is coming down now is going to affect your life as you continue to get older. Yeah. And don't take for granted any of the rights that we have because Six, our rights, mm. to be clear, are carved out of amendments of the constitution. So. All right, y'all, we're going to wrap this up because. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need to be all upset on a Sunday. Afternoon. No, we don't. We don't. So, so anyways, <laughs> drop down in the comments. Let us know what you think. Get down there. Let's talk about it. Um, and we'll be back next time. Please do, and don't ever get it mis uh, misconstrued. Black and curious is very much an ally of the community. Period. Oh, that's on period. So everybody is not welcome in the comments. God no. Bless. So if you come here with some bullshit, please believe you're going to get that bullshit back because I am with the shits. That's the one. <laughs> All right. So anyways, we'll see y'all next time. Everybody else, we love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>